Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video I'm going to go over the TB6600 stepper motor driver. I'm going to tie it to the Nexion display and I'm going to use an Android app. And the reason I'm going to include the Android app is in a previous video I made an Android app to control the stepper motor. And I'm going to use that exact same app with no modifications to run this stepper motor. All I'm going to do is change the driver to the TB6600. Now in this video I'm not going to go into making that Android app. I'm just going to point back to a video where I did that before. I'm going to start in the Arduino for this. And just in case somebody did follow that video from before, I'm going to pick up from where that video left off. There won't be too much to this, so I'm just going to alter the code that I used in that video. We're going to keep this the same up here. These are the variables and the stuff I use for the Nexion display. Or as I have this N character that I'll send to it if I need to or check for on strings coming from the Nexion display. And then I've got this asynchronous delay. And then I have this data from display variable. And since we're going to use the display later on, I will need these. I'm going to use the software serial. If you're using a mega, you can comment these lines out. I call it serial2, which is a keyword in the mega, so just comment those lines out. But for that last stepper video, I used the stepper library built in. But since we're using the TB6600, it kind of does a lot of that for us. So all we have to do is send it a pulse to make the stepper motor go. So we can eliminate the file or the library. We are going to use an asynchronous delay in order to step the motor at a certain pace. So we're going to leave the uh, motor delay and the motor delay length in the video. And then we're going to have this variable motor to let us know the state of the motor. And since I don't want it on when I first turn on the motor, I'm going to change that to zero. If we have problems, we can come back to this. But this is a much larger motor we're going to be driving, a NEMA 17. And so I don't want it to start up right away. And we will not need the counts per revolution. You do, you do that in the stepper motor board itself. And I'll show you a picture of that here in a little bit. So I can comment that line out also. And then down here, we don't have to create an instance of it because we're not using the library. So we can comment that line out too. So really, we just have a variable to tell us which direction the motor's going in. Zero will be off, one will be forward, and two will be reverse. And then we have a separate asynchronous delay to tell us when to start the motor or when to step the motor. And then down here in the setup, we have to add some pins because we're going to have three pins to run the stepper itself. And these three pins, I guess, won't really be running the stepper. They'll just control that driver. The nice thing about the TB6600 is it's completely isolated from the Nano. I'm going to use a Nano for this if I didn't state that earlier. But if you used a Mega or whatever, they're completely isolated because they use optocoupled um, inputs on the TB6600. We're going to use pin 8 as our clock. So whenever we take it from low to high or high to low, it should step the motor one step. Pin 9 is going to be our direction. Pin 10 is going to be our enable and disable. We're not going to use pin 10, so we're just going to set that to low. And it's enabled on a low. So if we were to take that pin high, you wouldn't be able to run the stepper. And like I said, we're not going to use it. We're just going to set it to low. In the previous video, we used the motor delay to tell us when to step the stepper, either forward or backward. We would check the status of the variable motor. If it was set to 0, then we didn't do anything. If it was set to 1, we'd step clockwise. And if it was set to 2 or anything else, we would go counterclockwise. And we use that instance of my stepper we created tied to the library. So in this case, we're going to be commenting that out because we're not using that. Instead, we're just going to directly write to pins. And we're going to write to pin 9. We're going to set it low. That, that tells it to go forward or backwards. I may have these pins backwards. You can see in one state I have 9 going low and the other one going high. But if you have it backwards, you can just come in and change that around. And then we're going to take pin 8. And whatever 8 currently is, in either state, we're just going to flip it to the other way. So if it's a 1, we'll make it a 0. If it's a 0, it'll make it a 1. And that's going to pulse that um, input on the TB6600. And that'll cause it to make one step. And then depending on how you have the switches set on the driver board itself, 
it depends on how quickly it will step around. The other thing that will affect the speed of the stepping of the motor is how often we execute this asynchronous delay. If we go back up to the top, we have the motor length, delay length set to 5, so it'll execute every 5 milliseconds. So if our motor is set to 0, it's not going to do anything. If it's set to 1, it'll go one way. It'll take one step every 5 milliseconds, one direction or the other direction, depending on whether it's a 1 or a 2. Now in the last video, I used an app, and what I did was I sent a serial string. And based upon that serial string, if it was a BT1 on, we would set the motor equal to 1. And up in the motor loop, if motor is equal to 1, it's going to step a certain direction. Now when I released the button, or took my finger off the button, it would send a BT1 off, OF. And so that would set the motor back to 0. So whenever I press the motor, it would spin, and when I let up on the button, it would stop. And then the same thing on for the second button. So one button is set to forward, one button is set to reverse. But then I also have a slider. And for the slider, I'm just checking for a certain length. So if it doesn't say button 1 or 2, on or off, it'll go down here. And if the D DFD, or the data from display length, is greater than 4 or 5 characters, it's going to strip off the last two. And the last two is going to be a variable 0 to 99. or 1 to 99, I think I got rid of the 0. And it will use that and set the motor delay length equal to that. So that means we can vary our, our length from 1 microsecond or 1 millisecond to 99 milliseconds. And then after we do that, we have to set the DFD equal to nothing. Because if we don't erase it out, then the next time around it won't actually do anything. And then we have this other asynchronous delay, and that doesn't have anything to do with really anything in this program, but it just runs, and I use that for different things. And what I do is I flash that internal LED um, every 500 milliseconds. We can change that to what we need. But just in case the DFD gets some sort of a weird string, and you'll see that in the serial display, I want to have a way to reset it. So every 500 milliseconds, no matter what's going on, we're going to reset that DFD to nothing. And since I'm not really doing any data checking, I'm just looking for five characters on the serial port. If it gets an extra character, it can get off. And you'll see that in there. And there should be more error checking than what I'm doing. But this is mainly just a brief tutorial on how to connect up that TB6600 and just to get it working for any sort of simple test and connecting it to the Nexion display or maybe to an app. We're not going to use this lower part here. This just looks for strange strings that come in that happen to end with that 0FF three times. Now at this point, if we upload this, which I'm going to do, it's not going to do anything because the motor is set to 0, and since I don't have anything connected to the serial port, I'm not going to be able to change that. So I'll get that all uploaded and set, and then we'll open the next one. We're going to do that first, and then we'll switch over to the app. There's really not a lot to this display, so I already have it built up. I have two buttons, a slider, and two variables. And when I want to go forward, I'm just going to send BT1 on. If you remember, the Arduino is looking for that. And then when I release it, I'm going to send BT1 off. And then for the reverse, I'm going to do BT2 on. And on release, I'm going to do BT2 off. Now the slider, that's a little bit different because when you send a string in this print s, I can't combine it in the print s. And I'm gonna wanna send I'm gonna wanna send SPD for speed and then a two character value. And so I have these two variables. And so I'm gonna set VA0, the text to it, equal to SPD for speed. And then I'm gonna set VA1, I'm gonna use covax to set VA1 text equal to the value of this. So it'll be um, 0 or 1 to 99. And then I'm going to take VA0, the SPD, and I'm going to add VA1 to it. So it'll be SPD and then 1 through 99. And then I'm going to print that out. So I'll print VA0 text dot 0. So I'm going to run this in debug and hopefully it'll make a little more sense. So I take my serial monitor, or my simulator return, and I 
set it to string so that way we can read what's being sent. When I press forward I get button one off, one on. When I release it I should get button one off. And then when I press this one I get button two on. When I release it, button two off. When I press this and release it I get speed 54, SPD 54. Now you can do it where you slide it back and forth and it sends a lot of strings at once, but I found that that was too fast that I'd want to do some sort of checking on that. So I just have it set up so when I release it I get 99 and this one should be 1. So now we know we're getting all the strings out. Now I'm going to go over some drawings that show my configuration of this or some images. And this is an image of the TB6600 as uh, the way I purchased it. You can buy different cases for it but I like this one because it has all of the writing on it and how to hook it up and what the switches mean. And so the steps are kind of important because depending on how you have your steps set up will determine how fast you can spin that thing around or maybe you want more accuracy for more steps as it goes around. And you can see that you can go from 200 to 6400 steps per one revolution. For our example we're going to have 200. So if I had it set at 6400 I'd have to make a larger adjustments in the speed and for the video I want it to go as quickly as possible. So I'm just going to set it at 200 steps per revolution. You can also see over here on the side, these are the pins that the Arduino is tied to. So you have your pulse, I have all my negatives tied together, and then I have the pulse tied to pin 8, the direction to 9, and the enable to pin 10. And you can see that there's an optocoupler here, the little symbol. The other thing you need to know is the amperage of the motor you're connecting it to, and that's what switches 4, 5, and 6 are for. So you need to look over at your current for your motor and make sure your switches are set right. You also need to know how your motor is set up. I kind of got lucky the motor that I'm using came with a diagram and a color code. So it made it pretty easy. And then you connect the voltage here for the motor. Now since it's optically coupled, the motor voltage is completely separate from the Arduino. So in this case, you can't really run the Arduino off of this driver board. Now that being said, I mean you could if you had a voltage regulator tied into the voltage that you supplied to this, but not directly from it. This is the configuration that I have. You can see that I got the power on the left, and then I have the stepper motor connected into the next four. And then the orange one is my pulse, the blue one is my direction, the white one is my enable, and then you can see the grounds I have tied together. And then I have it tied over here to the Nano. And then I have power pins that are going to feed the Nexion display and then the Bluetooth device when we switch over to the app. And then I have another ground on the lower side that feeds back to the TB6600. And then D2 and D3 are set up for my serial configuration. And then D8, D9, and D10 I've already gone over. And hopefully this comes through in the video okay, but I've got, I'm holding the display. And then I've got a little green flag on the motor itself. The wires are kind of intertwined there, but it should be fine. And then I have the serial monitor for the Arduino. So when I press reverse, you can see that it's stepping, and you can see that we're getting... Oh, I forgot to note that I am recording the direction and the speed. And then when I release it, it stops. And then you can see that the display shows that also. If I go forward, it should change directions. and it does. And then I'm going to change the speed. I can't remember which side is which. I think this should slow it down. Nope, it's faster. So we'll go over here now. Huh, the speed is still... Oh, that's because I have to make one more change. You can see that the speed is 9 because I'm ripping off only one portion of it. Because when I made that MIT app, I was having some problems that 99 was too slow. So let's go back into the Arduino real quick. I don't believe this counts as an error though there, editor, because it does work. And it's right in here, because here's where I set my length. But I'm just going substring 3 and 4. So 1 through 9 are going to be the same as 10 through 99. So all we need to do is change this to 5. So we're grabbing two characters instead of one. I'm going to upload this and then we'll go back and try it again just to make sure the speed is correct. Okay, so now we're back. Let's make sure it's still going at the rate. 
and now we'll go because I think this is higher value up here so this should be 99 and yes you can see that it's much slower now if we go somewhere in the middle it's faster I go all the way down and it's even faster actually the speed didn't change on that one I wonder if one if it's not reading it correctly I probably need to send zero one instead of one now in the other video we took this HCO6 and we hooked it up I already have the app built and so you can refer back to that video I'm gonna put a link up to it in the corner right about here and in the description if you want to go watch how to make that portion of it I'm gonna hook this up and then we'll try it with the app and you can see that that HCO6 is flashing now so now I need to connect it to the phone And once it stops flashing, you know that you're connected. I'm not sure how well this is going to come through, but when I push it, you can see that it goes. And go both directions. And I can slow it down. And I can speed it up. What's nice is by using this serial 2, we're using serial data, as long as the device transmits it serially, which both the next and display and the app do or that HCO6 does it makes it so you can use different things to control different things and that's what makes the Arduino kind of fun so just for a quick review when you're using the TB6600 for the Arduino it's pretty simple you just need a couple of pins you don't really even need this pin 10 you could just connect it to ground and you would be fine or I think you can even float it and it does okay. I would recommend connecting it to ground, but you never know since it is an LED, I don't think it would just flicker for no reason. But if you want to be sure, you can go to ground. And then you just need the direction and the clock. And then for our case, we just set up a simple asynchronous delay which we're going to which then we control the delay length and then that just and we use that motor variable to tell us which direction we want to go and how fast we want to pulse it. And then we just do this collection down here to tell us how to interpret what's coming in through the RS-232 port to determine which direction and the speed that we want to go. I don't think I would have done this project if it hadn't been for a viewer request, so I'm glad that that came through that way because my NEMA motors that I mainly use are on my CNC machine and I don't do much digging around on that. I pretty much have a purchase board and I use built-in software for that. So. I don't get to play much with the bigger motors, so this was kind of fun. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.